Doug, what should Christians think about the whole situation in the Ukraine and Russia? <laughs> in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, in five minutes. <laughs> five. So one paragraph. Uh, one paragraph. Do you, you sure you don't want just a soundbite? <laughs> So one of the things you have to understand about Eastern European politics and Russia's interaction mm-hmm. with Eastern European nations is you're dealing with feelings and sentiments and grudges and problems that go back centuries. Right. You're, you're not dealing mm-hmm. with just a, a little thing here and there. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not like two countries are now next to each other that were just introduced last year. Right. And then frictions develop. This, mm-hmm. I mean, there are deep-seated problems everywhere you look it looks very simple russia invades ukraine and uh-huh. and so the natural sympathy is with the underdog as my sympathy is with ukraine uh-huh. but there's a natural sympathy with ukraine that is not necessarily connected to knowledge of how complicated everything right. is so i agree with peter hitchens analysis of this partially mm-hmm. um i go with him two-thirds of the way okay where uh Peter Hitchens argues that if we had played it smarter after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Mm -hmm. we could have avoided all of this. The way the West has screwed up, I think, is we've allowed NATO to move steadily eastward. Uh And Russia, for reasons that go back centuries, Mm -hmm. is jumpy and skittish and, uh, you know, that just freaks them out. And I've seen some Christians defending Russia uh, by saying, "Well, look what we did when um, Cuba had missiles in the in the Cuban missile missile crisis. Right. We reacted strongly, and we were on the brink of war with Russia because they put missiles in Cuba, uh-huh. and the missiles uh, in Ukraine would be much closer than the ones in Cuba would be. But the difference is that there weren't any missiles in Ukraine. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> right. So, um, in other words." If we'd gone to the brink of war with Russia because they had thought about putting missiles in Cuba, Uh that would have been more analogous to what we're dealing with Mm -hmm. here. Having said that, uh, I want to be careful because Putin is one of the uh, figures over there who's taken a strong stand against the LGBTQ stuff. Right. He's more tolerant of Christianity, at least the uh, Russian Orthodox uh, kind than uh, a secularist in the West would be. So you don't want to say, rah, rah, three cheers for Ukraine, and then join up and find yourself in a tank with a rainbow on it. Right. You know, fighting mm-hmm. for the liberty of the West. So it's, things are a little complicated that, yeah. that way. The other complication is that after the dissolution, Ukraine used to be part of the Soviet Union. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Ukraine, being a piece of the Soviet Union, had a bunch of former Soviet nukes. Uh-huh. And this was back in the 90s, I think. And we, we sweet-talked Ukraine into giving up her nukes. Mm-hmm. And we promised to have their back. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. Uh, and, then, and then didn't. Uh-huh. Right. right. So that, the, on that side, that's where the Ukrainians would have a point. Now, I don't think that we should commit ground troops or troops there for any reason. Uh-huh. But I do believe even now uh, there's diplomatic action and pressures and things that could be brought to bear on Russia yeah. that could resolve this crisis, um, that, that could resolve the crisis and get Russia out of Ukraine, and we would have kept our promise to Ukraine. Mm-hmm. If someone says, well, Putin attacked Ukraine because he was afraid of nukes in Ukraine, mm-hmm. well, I can pretty much guarantee you that he is guaranteed that there will be nukes in Ukraine now right, right right any ukrainian leader would be out of his mind to not to, to not yeah. develop a nuclear capacity given yeah. given what has just happened the last thing is uh last complication is that russia is not the soviet union the soviet union was an empire bent on world conquest russia is trying to survive mm-hmm. russia is not yeah bent on world conquest whatever clout russia has it has through her oil, which she uh-huh. exports to Europe. And so when Biden took office, one of the things, he, he canceled the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, so basically, if we had said five years ago, mm-hmm. full throttle open oil development in North America, we would have had plenty of oil to sell to Europe. Yeah. So, so, um, 
so Europe could afford to cut off Russia. Yeah. You know, pl- That's apply a, another way that all of our decisions up till now have led to this. Right. It's just another. Um, yeah. I I think we ha- we would have trouble organizing a two car mm-hmm. funeral. Yeah. <laughs> so when when I'm seeing the the people walk through this and people who are um, encouraging some level of sympathy for Russia in this, the argument seems to go something like. Putin's not insane. He's not a Hitler. Uh, Russia is not the Soviet Union, not bent on uh, global mm-hmm. conquest. And so American actions or NATO actions leading up to this have treated them as if they were and mm-hmm. have sort of heckled us into this position. Right. But the, I guess the question I've got is Putin's decision to actually invade Ukraine with a full on blitzkrieg and yeah. just wipe it out. Does that not make us reconsider that first presupposition that He's not crazy that this isn't Russia. I mean, it does look like he actually is bent on yes. toppling another country. Some of, some of the tanks going into Ukraine had Soviet flags on them. Okay. Or, yeah. or like uh, like a, an old home week. Like, uh-huh. So I think it is r- most reasonable to go back and question your premises, mm-hmm. if that's what you're asking. Yes, I think yeah. we, we should question them all, realizing that it's not ever going to be yeah. simple. Do you find it kind of strange right now, just um, step back and kind of look at the American moment. I haven't seen America as unified in a sentiment for, a, well, a since pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so strange that when we've uh, gone through a couple of years of leaders who seems like their whole political platform is defined by an overabundance of caution. Right. Um, and then a guy who stands up and says, don't give me a ride out, give me more guns or more or bullets. Even, more ammo, yeah. And then... And then all of a sudden we're all just like in love with this guy. Um, it's kind of a weird way that for America to be united around something that. Well, because it's Zelensky's courage in this. Mm-hmm. And, and this is not to say that I would agree with all Zelensky's policies or whatever, you know, his yeah. agenda, but I don't think there's any denying that he's displayed a manly courage in this situation mm-hmm. and everybody gravitated to it. Yeah. Like, Whoa. Yeah. Um, and this is after two years of fear mongering. Mm-hmm. Right. And and he says, I don't I don't need a ride. I need ammo. Yeah. And everybody says, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That, and that tells us what leadership actually looks like. Yeah. OK, thank you. Before I go, I want to let you know about my page on Canon Plus. That's where you can find all of my audiobooks, sermons, as well as seasons one through three of Man Rampant. Just click the bottom link and have a look around.